one of the first images that appear on the internet when you type death is this one. So imagine a melancholic and sad phrase that could uh, could fit into this this image, like what gives life meaning is death. So just capture this this picture for a moment. The one of the first images that appear when you type life is this one. So could we fit the same phrase, the same idea, in this image that represents life to make it more well, inspiring or to make it represent hope or something. It's not certainly the most inspiring quote, but <laughs> it, it for sure feels different than the first one. So messages are powerful. Passing messages is, is a powerful thing. But sometimes changing the way people see and people perceive your message can be even more powerful. So just raise your hand here who thinks that, well, sometimes we can be influenced by media and by how media portrays stuff. I see some hands here. Uh, so yeah, sure, media can influence the way we think and the way we, we interpret stuff. But there are things that couldn't influence you on that, or that, or that couldn't have this, such this power. Like Disney movies, for, exa for example. So, and if I said you that every scene in every Disney movie, in every animation, does exactly that. So, we need firstly to establish a line here that it is very different to make you think Simba is a great lion than to make you think Trump is a great president, for example. There is a very sharp line between the influences that media and that uh, movies or animations can do with that. So, well, I always loved stories. I, I love stories and narratives and I love happenings and timelines and everything. And I, with time I discovered that stories can be told in many different ways. Stories can be told as, uh, can be verbally told, can be told as books, as movies, as theater pieces, as animations, as video games, in, as music. In every way you want, you can pass a story. So, for, uh, but in each, in each way you can tell a story, there are millions, there are an infinite number of ways where you can influence what the spectator, what the, the one who you, who you are telling the story to perceive this. So, for example, in books, you can play with words to form metaphors. In theater pieces, you can play with lightning, with music, with dance to pass different stories. But well, this is a presentation mainly about animations. So what have animations have to do with this? So animations exaggerate. One of the first, one, it is in the animation's DNA to exaggerate stuff. So animations exaggerate facial expressions so that an, even a young child can see surprise and admiration in Moana's face here. Animations also exaggerate in colors. They ask how colorful can it be and doubles the answer. They also plays with colors when talking about characters. So colors accompany the characters and colors see and show characters growth and change over time. So another thing that animations exaggerate on is music. So I think that many of you can even hear this picture, but let it all go. <laughs> uh, the most powerful resource in animation and in storytelling is how you tell the story. In animation, this is reflected by the animation style. And this is very sad because in recent times, it has become very difficult for a new animation style to come up and to show up. So why is that? Well, Disney and Pixar and Blue Sky Studios and others have created this style of animation that brought them lots of money and lots, lots of money. So why they, why they would change that after all? So animation styles, are what differ this scene from up to this scene from the Corpse of Bride. So they are, yes, very different in its styles, in its colors, and in everything. Uh, they differ from each other because, primarily because of its style. But when you watch movies such as Frozen, such as Moana, or even 
uh, Coco, for example, that are that is even a movie that was supposed to be different. They all appear to be from the same universe. They all appear to belong to the same world. And this is the sad part, because with this, uh, Disney and these animation studios are killing the creativity behind the creation of new, new, new ways to tell stories and new forms of animation. But the, this cause, this creativity, is not lost, is not killed. Because there is still one market, one story type that uses all its creativity to pass stories in different ways. And well, for all this was kind of spoiled there, but for all of you who, who know me, who knows me, also will know that I'm talking about video games. So video games also tell stories and pass, uh, pass stories in a very similar way to animations. They use characters, they use music, they use colors, they exaggerate and stuff, and they show what they are supposed to show. But one primary difference between a video game and an animation is that in an animation or in a movie, you are seeing what the directors, what the artists thought you should see. In a video game, you see what you think you should see. You, th you see the world through your own eyes. And this is very powerful also. So just some examples of how, uh, how animation works in video games. Here is a video game called the Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. And here in, the, in this style, this animation, uh, is a very middle ground, is a very blurry line between realism and fantasy. But in another game of the same franchise, to contrast with the Disney movies all appearing Rico, with a game from the same franchise, we have a totally different style that, that dives deep into fantasy and that breaks totally the, the style and the animation here. Uh, in Sea of Thieves, for example, we have the most photorealistic and beautiful waters of video games in contrast to uh, cartoonized uh, objects and characters. And this all fits together. The realism and the cartoon, the animation and the real fits together in this world. In The Last Day of June, there is a game uh, that explores life and love by the lenses of a world basically made of oil painting. So this all uh, enriches the way uh, we tell stories as, as humans, because humans, uh, since the beginning, humans told stories. And with technology, humans have been able to, to, to tell stories in different ways and different manners. And this shows, th uh, these examples show how uh, video games are preserving this creativity in creating different ways of telling stories that is lacking in, la in the recent years animation movies. So there's a, another example that is Red Dead Redemption 2 that goes very deep into photorealistic worlds. It's almost a real image, but it's not. It's from a video game. So for the future, I hope, and I think that most of you hope, that Disney and Pixar see how they are killing the creativity behind animations by doing them all look, looking the same. But until that day comes and they realize it, I think that the video games market will very uh, easily be able to hold itself and to maintain this creativity in the world. So next time you see a story or you watch a story or you hear a story, think of how it could have been told differently and surprise yourself by the innumerable possibilities and innumerable beautiful possibilities that could emerge from that. So thank you.